Right, right. So let's uh, let's keep it all the way in New York, though, but let's transition. Major League Baseball officially kicked off. Um, both of our teams won on opening day, but then both of our teams lost the second day of the season. Yeah. Um, you know, for the, for, the, for the Yankees, it was a little shocking because uh, I, I, you guys looked really, really sharp opening day. Yesterday, pitching struggled. Um, for the Mets, it was the same old story. The bullpen blew it. Edwin Diaz blew a save, and then we ended up losing an extra innings. Um, but what are your thoughts? We're two days in, still very early. What are your thoughts on the Yankees, though? Um, I love it. I love where we're going. Um, not having fans in the stands may be the best thing that ever happened to Giancarlo Stanton because uh, he the home runs in back-to-back games. He's, he's looking like the MVP that we brought over two years ago, right? I mean, I know it's only two games, obviously, but again, but he is looking like that right now. Um, I mean, we know what we're going to get from Cole. I don't, it's not like, I don't expect us to go 60-0 and on the season. Um, and I don't think our, our rotation is, is in order just yet because I don't think that Paxton is our, is our number two pitcher. I, um, you know, he, honestly, for me, he'd probably be fifth in the, in the, in, in the rotation. You know, I want, I want Sevy out there. I want German who, who dominated last season, you know, up until he had his, 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 his you know, domestic um, abuse situation. He dominated last year. I want him in there. I want Tanaka before Paxton. So, you know, I think, we're still organizing. I know, you know, guys are coming back and, and whatnot. But, you know, I mean, and, and they're on the road. They won't be back in, uh, in, in, in the Bronx, I think, until August. If I'm not mistaken, I think opening, home opening is in, is in August. They're going to be on the road for a, a little while. So, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a rough one going into, into the, uh, the World Series uh, champion's house. And, uh, you know, listen, that first game, that was the emotional, you know, well, we it was like, all right, yeah, we starting the season off, off right. So I was I was really happy about that, you know. But I, I think I was even happier with what we saw from both teams to start that game, um, getting around the entire uh, the, the baseball field and kneeling together in unison. Um, Aaron Judge said that this was something that the team discussed, and they decided as as a unit, as a collective. This is what they wanted to do. I love it because, you know, Eric used to spoke uh, it was about a week or two ago about um, about your, one of your early on blogs in regards to, to, to Major League Baseball kind of being out of touch. And you know what? They, they must they must have read that blog. They must have heard you speaking on it again because they have definitely been making strides. Seeing Black Lives Matter on the pitching mound. Oh, my God. That was so amazing. To see that, to see those guys kneeling before the game, to see, um, you know, to watch the, the, the Dodgers game, see Mookie Betts kneeling with, with his teammates around him, one arm on each shoulder. I am so loving it. I listen. I had to, I had to even, you know, get hyped up about the Mets out there wearing those Black Lives Matter shirts. You know, like it, it just it, such a great weekend for sports and social justice a great weekend and I really hope that we continue to build on it. Absolutely. I, I thought it was, I thought it was so well done by major league baseball on a number of fronts. Um, as you mentioned, the kneeling, um, Andrew McCutcheon and his wife actually came up with a message that was played before every game. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, some players continue to kneel shout out to Gabe Kapler, who was the first manager and has continued to do it. Um, the Black Lives Matter t-shirts, as I said, the Mets wore them. I also, I believe I saw uh, the Milwaukee Brewers who had them on as well uh, before their game yesterday against the Cubs. Um, the patches on the sleeves, um, they were given two patches. Players could choose which one they wanted to wear, and a lot of players said, I want to wear both. Um, so I thought that was great to see. I loved everything about it because, as you mentioned, I, I've been critical. As much as I love baseball, I've been critical in their disconnect with uh, not only the, the black community, but just as a whole, understanding and taking and seizing the moments and taking opportunities to show unison in the cause. Um, and I thought they did a great job of that. The Black Lives Matter on the mound surprised me because we had not heard anything about that. We didn't, we didn't hear them say we were going to do anything the way the NBA had let us know, hey, Black Lives Matter is going to be on the court. We didn't know that. So to see it there on the mound, again, is a constant reminder, as we always talk about, it's a great way for sports to keep this in your face. It's on the mound, every pitch, you're looking at it the whole game, no matter what game you're, you're watching. 
Uh, so I thought that was a great sign as well. Um, not having fans, I don't think it, it's a little adjustment. Don't get me wrong because the sounds of the game are different. I, I, opening day when I'm watching and Sesame just hit the home run, off the sound of the bat, it sounded good. But you're so used to hearing the crowd roar yeah, that it, yeah. it almost threw me off for a second. Yeah. Um, so no, we don't get that. You know what I'm saying? The same thing when Stanton hit his home run. Like, you can hear it off the bat. It sounds yeah. good. But I don't hear the crowd going yeah, crazy. Yeah. So it's like, did he really catch it all? Or did he, you know right. what I'm saying? So it, <laughs> yeah. it throws you off a little bit. Um, but but overall, you got to love it, man. Yeah. O- o- yeah. O- overall, I, I think baseball did a great job of, of the rollout of the new season. And I, I want to give credit to baseball in this way, too. I think the expansion of the playoffs is going to be a really good thing for them. Because we talk so often about, you know, it's a long season, it's a, it's a marathon. Well, now it's a sprint. And if you make it a sprint and you include more teams in that sprint, now it makes it more exciting. You know, for, for certain teams, we know the Yankees are expected to win the division, right? Yeah. The Mets are trying to compete. But now it opens those things up for other teams who maybe can't compete with the Yankees. Devil, the, the Tampa Bay Rays really can't compete with the Yankees. They're more of a second place team, but now they know, hey, we can make the playoffs and maybe we have a chance to make some noise. Um, yeah, you know, you, you, yeah, anybody got a chance. Right. And and that's why I like it because in this setting, it it creates more of that, all right, everybody has an opportunity. Let's get into the playoffs. There's no more first round buy for anybody. There's no wild card playing game. It's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be eight teams on each side, start right away, best three out of five with with the first three with the three games being um home field advantage. It's basically you playing all the games at home. You're not, you're not switching back and forth. You're not going anywhere else. So now it gives you an opportunity to really see what you're playing for and winning the division. You know what I'm saying? I love it. I, I, I like the, the rollout of Major League Baseball. I think they did a great job with it. And, you know, I'm excited to see what else they come up with as the season goes on because I, I've heard that they have some other little wrinkles that they're trying to introduce as well. Nice and back. shout out to them. Yeah, and we got to see yesterday it happened in the Mets game. We got to see the new extra inning rule, you know, with a runner starting on second base, and it sped up the game. We didn't have this long marathon of an extra inning game. It ended in the 10th inning because they started with a man on second, and Atlanta was able to score. Yep. So I'm excited to see it. Um, We do know, like I said, with the uh, Black Lives Matter movement and the message being displayed at many places, many ballparks, Boston actually has it on a big billboard uh, facing out towards the highway. I did hear um, there were some people who weren't too thrilled about that, but we know who those, we know who those people so, might be. It's, it's, it's Boston, so that doesn't surprise me. Um, I, listen, I definitely, you know, saw uh, a lot of comments that I wasn't feeling, you know, just on different posts from, from the weekend on, on, on people that, you know, don't want that this type of equality. Don't want this type of uh, of, of change. So I definitely heard that, but you know what? It's in your face, and 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 again, this is a lifestyle, it's a culture, and it's not going anywhere. So you better get used to it. We ain't going nowhere. Absolutely. Now, um, we did see Yankees and Nats set a uh, new TV Major League Baseball rating record, mm-hmm. um, which is big again because the message is being displayed, and we see the audience was tuned in. Yep. After that was that was the, the icing on the cake, right? There. Right. Right. And that's why I was getting to it. It, it now it, it just it heightens it so much more. Now we we've put out the message. We've shown this sign of unity, and the people tuned in. It's in your face. I love it, man. I'm just happy baseball's back, man. And I'm happy that we got NBA coming right behind it. Smush Parker here, formerly up to Los Angeles Lakers, and you are now tuned in to Real Fans, Real Talk. Real 